I'm excited. I just seen Tracy Morgan. I'm here to see Donovan Mitchell. It's insane. If only he could become a Nick. I was just going to ask you, how badly do you want Mitchell to become a Nick? New York is answered. They want Donovan Mitchell to be a Nick. You see the people? They out here. It's been a minute since the last time I brought you guys an update on Donovan Mitchell. And now that we have all of this information and we're understanding why a deal hasn't been made yet, well, I figured it was the appropriate time to make this video for you guys. By the way, if a trade does happen this week, I won't be available to make a video because, well, I'm sure if you followed me on Twitter and Instagram, you could kind of figure out what I'm going through right now. So make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. If you want shorter versions of this content, make sure you follow us on TikTok talk and instagram it's at the flight mic for both now that we get all that out of the way cue the intro Check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? So here's where we left off and the most recent information that we have in regards to this whole situation surrounding Donovan Mitchell possibly getting traded. So almost a week ago, we got this report from Sham Shramia and Tony Jones. Now, keep Tony Jones in mind because he's gonna come in later on in this video with a very important pseudo conspiracy theory that just makes a lot of sense. But the report was very significant. The New York Knicks and the Utah Jazz re-engaged in Donovan Mitchell trade talks, but hurdles remain according to sources. Now, if you guys didn't know, the New York Knicks and the Utah Jazz have already tried to work out a deal for Donovan Mitchell, but the reason why it didn't happen was because the Utah Jazz wanted a lot and the New York Knicks have a lot of assets. And currently there's other things going on for the New York Knicks that may kind of handicap them in their ability to potentially trade for Donovan Mitchell. And this is gonna frustrate New York Knicks fans. We're gonna get to it in a little bit, but first let me read this article before I tell you that. After several weeks of no conversations, the New York Knicks and Utah Jazz recently re-engaged in trade talks centered on Donovan Mitchell, league sources tell The Athletic. The Knicks and Jazz had a fresh trade conversation within the past week about potential packages for Mitchell, according to sources. There is no traction between the two teams on a deal, and no Mitchell trade is imminent for the Utah Jazz. The Charlotte Hornets and Washington Wizards are also among the teams pursuing Donovan Mitchell, those sources have said. Both the Charlotte Hornets and the Washington Wizards would be a very interesting destination for Donovan Mitchell. Could you just imagine a backcourt of LaMelo Ball and Donovan Mitchell? Who would the Washington Wizards trade at this point for Mitchell, if you think about it? I mean, they already have Bradley Beal. He pretty much plays the same exact position as Donovan Mitchell. So would you just have Donovan Mitchell sliding into the point guard position? Would you attempt to trade Bradley Beal in this instance? Because bear in mind, Bradley Beal has a no trade clause. Would you trade like Denny Avdia and a bunch of your younger players that you recently drafted for Donovan Mitchell because the Utah Jazz are currently rebuilding so they would be very much so interested in taking back young assets and draft picks for Donovan Mitchell. Bear in mind this is a team that just traded Rudy Gobert and Royce O'Neal and in both instances they did it for draft capital. I mean for Royce O'Neal they literally got a 2023 NBA first round draft pick from the Brooklyn Nets. But the article isn't over here guys check this out because they have some very important information here. Throughout trade talk the New York Knicks made their interest in Donovan Mitchell abundantly clear, one source with knowledge of the situation said. The Knicks and Jazz seriously discussed a Mitchell trade during the NBA's Las Vegas Summer League in mid-July, but talk stalled out and led to nearly a month of inactivity between the sides. Now with training camp just over a month away, the sides have reignited talks, hurdles toward a deal remain. So it sounds like it's more of the same here, and we actually have intel in regards to what the trade package was and how both sides feel about it but check this out because there's some good foreshadowing here utah has set a high price threshold for mitchell who so far is believed to be comfortable with either outcome of staying with the utah jazz or being traded elsewhere mitchell 25 has made three consecutive all-star appearances and has averaged 24 points four and a half assists and 4.2 rebounds over his five nba seasons but even more significantly the utah jazz have already made significant changes to their roster this offseason Season. They traded Rudy Gobert to 
to the Minnesota Timberwolves and Royce O'Neal to the Brooklyn Nets in July. I mean, considering that and the fact that they recently changed their head coach, it seems like there's a lot of changes going down and Donovan Mitchell is about to hit his prime. I mean, if his prime is supposed to be his age 26 or 27 season, you don't want to have Donovan Mitchell going through a rebuild during his prime seasons. This is a great opportunity to try to trade him, especially when you look at Donovan Mitchell's contract. I mean, if you think Kevin Durant's contract is appealing because he's under contract for the next like four seasons, Donovan Mitchell is under contract for the next three seasons. And he is currently 25 years old going on to 26. So if the Brooklyn Nets are asking for a tremendous haul in return for Kevin Durant, I would understand the Utah Jazz asking for even more. So you might be wondering, okay, Mike, this was almost a week ago. So has there been any progress in regards to a deal for Donovan Mitchell? Well, it sounds like it's more of the same here. The New York Knicks were turned off by Danny Ainge's initial trade demands per Mark Berman. Ainge reportedly asked for a package of seven first rounders and players in return for Donovan Mitchell. Talks went stale, but have renewed. I mean, if you remember during Danny Ainge's tenure with the Boston Celtics and just looking at this man's history, this is a guy known for like legitimately screwing the teams that he executes trades with. I mean, going back to the Cleveland Cavaliers trading Kyrie Irving to the Boston Celtics, clearly at the time, the deal was kind of favored towards the Boston Celtics. And you see how it ended up. Yeah. Kyrie Irving played like two seasons with the Celtics and then went to the Brooklyn Nets, but Isaiah Thomas barely played with the Cleveland Cavaliers at all. And this is after Isaiah Thomas had one of the most inspiring playoff runs in NBA history where his sister died in a car accident and Isaiah Thomas was dealing with hip issues, but Isaiah Thomas still played throughout those playoffs with the hip injury he sustained. You can make an argument that he made his injury even worse. And then afterwards, he got traded that off season by Danny A which I understand you can't be emotional whenever it comes to business decisions, so I get it. Then you go back to 2013 when Danny Ainge traded Jason Terry, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce to the Brooklyn Nets for an obscene haul of draft picks that literally set the Boston Celtics up for the next decade. So Danny Ainge does kind of have this reputation of screwing the teams that he tries to do these deals with. And I mean, I understand asking for a tremendous amount of capital for a player that is under contract for the next three years and is in the midst of his prime. I mean, Donovan Mitchell doesn't seem to want to leave the Utah Jazz, so you better be giving a lot of draft picks in order to get him. Now, how do the Knicks feel about this? Well, first of all, the Knicks have not been doing a good job in regards to keeping discreet about what players they rather give up than others. And we're going to get to that in a sec, but here's the article that discusses how the Knicks felt about this potential trade, saying that the New York Knicks and Utah Jazz have re-engaged in trade talk surrounding Donovan Mitchell after a initial discussions broke down. The cause of the breakdown was reportedly New York feeling that Utah was asking for too much in return for Mitchell. The Knicks have been long linked to acquiring Mitchell. The challenge is that the Jazz's front office executive Danny Ainge wants a massive return for the all-star guard. Ainge reportedly asked New York to send a package that included a combination of seven future draft picks and young players in exchange for Mitchell. The Knicks balked as they want to make sure they have enough in reserve to build a title contender after acquiring Mitchell. The Knicks are also conscious that they could be forced by the NBA to forfeit a future pick. New York is currently under investigation to determine if they tampered with Jalen Brunson before signing the point guard in free agency this summer. I mean, come on, they clearly did. I mean, three or four days before free agency started, we all knew how much Jalen Brunson was about to get paid by the New York Knicks. It was literally public knowledge. They did a horrible job staying discreet in that situation as they're about to to do a horrible job discussing who they'd be okay with giving up in a trade for Donovan Mitchell. Tom Thibodeau reportedly prefers to keep Quinton Grimes over RJ Barrett. Real quick before I get to this, if you're a Knicks fan, let me know in the comment section down below, would you rather keep Quinton Grimes or RJ Barrett? But here's how this article goes. Tom Thibodeau remains hopeful that the New York Knicks can add Donovan Mitchell via the Utah Jazz in trade this summer. However, Thibodeau reportedly prefers to keep one of his young players than any deal for Mitchell. Quinton Grimes has become a favorite of Thibodeau since the pre-draft process, so much so that the Knicks coach prefers to keep Grimes over RJ Barrett in a trade for Mitchell. Thibodeau wanted Grimes in the lead up to the 2021 draft, as he thought Grimes' combination of size and skill on both ends would be a good fit. Thibodeau also believes that Grimes would fit in well in a backcourt rotation featuring Donovan Mitchell and Jalen Brunson.
Houston. The Jazz reportedly like Grimes as a potential building block if they rebuild after dealing Mitchell. Utah also seemingly likes RJ Barrett, despite the fact that he is due for a new contract via extension or after the upcoming season. So I could understand wanting to keep Quinton Grimes over RJ Barrett because RJ Barrett took tremendous strides in his development this past season. I mean, the man averaged 20 points per game, grabbed 5.8 rebounds per game, averaged three assists per game, and shot 34% from three and 41% from the field, which isn't incredible numbers, but it is definitely improvement from the year before. And something tells me that a NBA team would happily give RJ Barrett a max contract offer sheet when he hits restricted free agency, just based off of his potential alone. And in that case, the New York Knicks would be forced to match that offer sheet because they don't want to lose RJ Barrett for nothing. In the case of Quinton Grimes, sure, you don't really have a crazy body of work from him because he's played in 46 games this past season, averaged 17 minutes per game and averaged about six points per game. But in those games he played, he averaged 4.1 three-pointers attempted per game and was able to drain 38% of his threes. Even furthermore, he's still on a rookie scale contract. So you could easily build around Donovan Mitchell and Jalen Brunson, hypothetically, a little bit easier than if you were to keep RJ Barrett and also presumably add Donovan Mitchell and have Jalen Brunson still over there. And I don't know what they're gonna do with Julius Randle. They have to do something about that contract. It's just an obscene contract. So here's an interesting point about this. And this is going back to Tony Jones. If you remember in the beginning of the video, I told you pay attention to Tony Jones because he's gonna make a very interesting point here. The Utah Jazz have four nationally televised games. Three are on NBA TV. The fourth is a home game against the New York Knicks on TNT. Clearly the league expects Donovan Mitchell to be wearing blue and orange that night. So it's really interesting that there's only one nationally televised game for the Utah Jazz on TNT and it's against the New York Knicks. I have to admit that's very, very wise scheduling by the NBA. So that's the update we have for you guys from Donovan Mitchell, man. Let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think about all this. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.